Hi, I'm John, a community currency engineer, and I title this Pahenix Bucks Pahux Up. They are doing it wrong. So these are articles from ABC 15, in Phoenix, I presume, and another article from Main Street Cash, called it the Community Currency Discount Art Tokens, and an article, The Rich, World's Richest Popper from the Arizona Republic in July 19, 1997, about me in town promoting Let's Currencies. So these are the three articles about how the system in Pahenix is not going to work very well. It's a dinky toy, which is why I titled this Pahenix Bucks Box Up. So an article from ABC15.com. Pahenix Metro News, Central Pahenix. 23 Valley Businesses to Use New Currency, Pahenix Bucks. Reported by Tim Vetcher on June 23rd. Pahenix. In light of the economic downturn, a number of communities across the country have started printing their own money. It's called script or local currency, and now the idea is coming to Arizona for the very first time. Hey, I was there in 97. It's called Pahenix Bucks, and it launches July 4th. It's all about supporting the local businesses. If we shop locally, it keeps the money local, said Joey Grether, who came up with the idea for Pahenix Bucks. It's based off the concept of local currency, especially a way for a community to exchange services and locally produced goods. Well, not very many goods if you're using little $1 ones, right? Detroit, Ithaca, and Berkshire region of Massachusetts all currently use a form of local currency. It just keeps the money in the community rather than shopping at a corporate chain where your money will be siphoned off to a headquarters in some other city or potentially another country, said Grether. Starting on the 4th of July, 1,600 of the coins will go into circulation around the Pahenix area. Geez, we got more $1 chips at our local $2 game than they do there. The tokens can be used for a dollar off at participating businesses. Wow, how dinky. You don't have to participate if you don't want to, but if you do, you can have, just ask for your change in Pahenix bucks. And you can use those tokens at other participating businesses in the Valley, said Grether. So far, 23 businesses have signed up to accept Pahenix bucks, including Conspire, Kari's Bistro, the Lost Leaf and Barn Gallery, and Hood Ride Bicycle Shop. A lot of us downtown already think locally it's a great way to introduce the concept to outsiders, says Derek Pacheco, owner of Hood Ride. If the concept catches on, Pahenix Bucks may just one day do away with the dollar. We're taking a baby step, said Grether. Is Phoenix able to handle a local currency? We think it is. Well, when they said the idea is coming to Arizona for the first time, I was there in 1997, and I'm going to take a moment to read you the little bit from The World's Richest Pauper, and that was on uh, July 19th. Winner at the table, can't seem to prevail on election night. Gambler playing odds that his income tax stance doesn't end up a losing hand. And beside the picture of me in the wishing well with my let sticker, John Turmel's in the Guinness Book of Records for running for political office 42 times, now 69, and never winning, same thing. But Turmel does quite well in his other full-time profession, gambling. But according to his own tax records, Turmel doesn't own anything and he hasn't paid taxes since 79. Well, I did pay a few little bit of taxes during 93. So, by Paul Brinkley Rogers, the Arizona Republic. Professional gambler John Turmel may wonder what the odds are of his ever winning an election, given the fact that Guinness Book of Records calls him the biggest loser of all time. But winning, he's lost 42 times, does not seem to be an important part to this arm-waving 46-year-old citizen of Ottawa, Canada, as turning the world monetary system inside out. Fixing it. We do not need money, he said, but instead would do better with a new system of vouchers issued for labor and interest-free loans that could end poverty and hunger. And it's happening now, everywhere. Termel is spreading the notion of local employment trading systems in the valley when he is not cleaning up at local casinos playing cards. How much has this man who's never held a job won here? He won't say exactly, but he whips out a billfold at the 160 a week El Rancho Motel in Mesa and zips through a sheaf of dollar bills as if he were shuffling cards. I'm doing fine, fine, he says with a poker face. When you're a gambler, he says you have to worry about the tax man. Not that John Turmel worries. After all, he hasn't paid me taxes since 79 when he first became a professional gambling and the, the law would ignore him because he doesn't actually own anything except perhaps my socks. 
Every object, including the 87 Ford Bronco, he drives in the name of his companion, Pauline Morissette, who travels with him. I was probably the only man in the world who was both a pauper and a millionaire in the same year, Terminal says with pride, remembering the 1993 when he was arrested and convicted of running a gaming house in Ottawa. The police estimated he made between 1.3 million and 3 million that year. Actually, lots of people went from millionaire to broke, so I can't see why I would have said that. They claim I owe $300,000, but I'm not going to pay it, he says, gesturing around the threadbare room. I'm a frugal man. Tremel told the judge he may have made that much, but he'd given it away to charities and spent it, he says, which is why the cops called their investigation Project Robin Hood. Um, everyone, someone else may be sheepish about owning up to an arrest, but not Turmel, who says that his losing appeal to the Canada Supreme Court allowed him to air his economic theories. It's the kind of message that gets Turmel shoved off the stage of political gatherings where he turns up running for mayor of Ottawa or even prime minister wearing a hard hat. Or it gets him hustled away when he pickets monetary meetings to accuse bankers of genocide against the third world. It gets him flamed on the internet where he's listed at the little interlog as Kook of the Month, 1995, July. But Turmel thrives on losing in politics, not at the blackjack table, or on getting arrested. The legendary loser travels with a 206-page self-published book full of press clippings about his misadventures together with... Ah, the Bible and the Quran for high-minded admonitions against usury. My 200-page book about the adventures of John the Engineer at the time. So Termel reckons he got disenchanted with money when he started gambling, which was right after he took a course on the mathematics of gaming at Canada's Carleton University. It was there he realized, he said, that casino chips and coins have a lot in common, except that chips never lose their value, but money does which is why he filed a losing suit against the Bank of Canada in 83, claiming it was a casino and illegal. So, charging a fee for the privilege of participating in a gamble. So, I ended up sending a message to the website that said, hey, go check my 97 Arizona Republic. And I mentioned that as the ship of state finances sink, it's nice to see another community currency lifeboat starting up, especially in Pahenix. Best of all, when the local currency is pegged at a time standard of money, how many dollars per hour earned locally can be intertraded with other time banks globally. In 99, I paid for 39 nights out of 40 in Europe with an IOU for a night back in Canada worth five hours. If you want to come and stay in Canada, it'll cost you five hours worth of your Pahenix bucks. Gee, that's 50 Pahenix bucks out of 1,600. Takes a lot out for one night in Canada, right? But we'll take them in hundreds of Canadian letses and cells in Quebec. And time banks. So UN Millennium Declaration says restructure, see my bank math. So sure, right now you've only got 23 businesses. But imagine the day when all businesses are taking advantage of interest-free financing too. Well, there was another article next day on the 24th of June. A community currency discount art token opens in Phoenix area July 4th. That says local businesses across the Pahenix Valley are signing up to try out the new Pahenix Bucks. At, uh, token art token the token was crafted by a local artist and it seems over 1,000 of them will be manufactured for this test project the participating business will allow one token per customer per day and the token will offer businesses uh, customers at least one dollar off their purchase but perhaps more at the discretion of the business here's more from their website it's intended to fa facilitate awareness of how economies function develop a tangible format for community support networks, and foster ideas about long-term financial initiatives. The worth of this token is inherent as art rather than metal. So it's not like poker chips, which don't have any value in sell inherent, but just what you can get for it, or e-credits or whatever, more like sell minutes, but smaller. Sculpted by the local artist jewelry, Chadwick and Ruling, each the uh, Pahenix bucks will be something worth having and exchanging. So while this might seem like an enormous project, we felt that something small scale could be constructed as an experiment to see if our community could sustain something like this. Now that the prototype has been created, we have been showing the token around to local independent businesses that are key components to creating and fostering the development of local culture. The response, while at times is perplexing, has been overwhelmingly positive and supportive. We had originally set out to make 500 tokens, and it looks like we're going to make over 1,200 tokens. We're interested in constructive feedback and projects utilizing the token. Please direct all inquiries to conspire 
pahenix.gmail.com with Pahenix Bucks as the subject. Well, why don't you open up bigger accounts for all your businesses and give them all a couple of thousand Pahenix Bucks each?